Hey, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. What up guys, this is Monkey Figure Reviews and today we will be doing an unboxing video on the Masterlice One Piece Robo Noah Zoro Japanese style figure by Bandai Spirits. Or rather it is called Zoro Juro because that's the name he uses in Wano. So this figure had been released for quite a while, about one or two months ago and it should be still readily available as of this video. Just to show you guys how tall the box is, my ruler can't really measure it within its range. So I estimate it to be around 12 and a half inches, around 33 cm. So pretty tall, pretty big, and I'm quite a distance away from the box. Okay, so let's talk about the box itself, and right in front you can see an image of Zoro, but I believe this is the prototype. So for the actual product, we're gonna see quite a bit of differences, and we're gonna talk about it later. Uh, and here we see Zoro Juro, I believe. Here we say we see a uh, three sword style. And not sure what this is, and not sure what this is. This is like swordsman something. But also at the back here we can see the Jolly Roger for Zoro. The design is really nice. It's like a it's like a Japanese painting of Zoro the warrior. So it's really really cool. Okay, so side view another image of Zoro. Uh, with some other description uh, and of course this is in a different style more like a painting this is the other side which is the same I suppose this is the back another angle and I don't know like other stuff <laughs> to describe Zoro and at the top we have our Toei sticker here to prove its authenticity okay and um, just one thing I would like to mention to my release is like the international release so over here is in English and I believe the first release is actually in Japanese. So if you are ever considering to buy this figure and you found out this discrepancy, just it's not a big deal. Just make sure you have the Toei sticker. Okay, so um, my box is sealed. Let's just do the unboxing. Let's go. Here you go, I have taken out the parts of this figure and boy, I must say, when I was taking it out from the box, I was really surprised at how heavy and dense this figure is. It's just something I didn't expect. Um, but there's a total of three pieces. So the first one we have is Sword Shusui that I believe is supposed to go onto his right hand. We have Zoro himself and this um, supporting base that you can choose to put on if you want to give him extra support but as I see here it is not necessary he stands pretty well on his own I just gave him his sword and there you go guys Zoro Juro so first impressions I gotta say that this figure is pretty awesome I'm, I love his pose the design for this figure the coloring around his costume is also pretty good the different shades of green and the gold on his cape just makes this quite beautiful. His facial expression is also in sync with Zoro's character and likeness wise it's pretty much Zoro. So the one thing that is just kind of sticking out for me right now is the skin tone for this figure. He just seems a little bit too pale. It's almost like he, he was sucked indoors for, for one year and finally came out. But it's not something that breaks the figure. It's something that you notice, but it's like it's still possible, it's still okay, and you don't kind of ignore the the other good things about this figure just because of the skin tone. I believe it looks worse on the camera. In real life it's actually pretty okay. But the camera just kind of doesn't really capture the, the saturation of the figure well enough. For now, let's just take a closer look. This is Zoro's face and like I said, I think his facial expression is pretty much on point. Don't think that you can ask for a lot to improve on over here. It's really quite well done. 
I especially love the creases between his brows. Really shows <laughs> how pissed off he is and ready to fight. That is really well done in my opinion. His mouth uh, is kind of biting this stick which is Wow, feels really really fragile, so you have to be really careful not to break it. Um, and moving on to the side view, his earrings are kind of not individually separated, they are just a cluster. This part here could be, it's kind of rough, could be smoothened out more. And his hair, you can see some parts of his hair has some have some rough edges, so that obviously can be better and can be improved on also i do kind of find the shading a bit weird in some places um in terms of um the color maybe it's kind of obvious from the front you can see from this part it's actually lighter shade of green and here is darker but the transition from the light to dark it is too sudden it is not natural at all so it should have been more gradual like this look at this strand here and this strand here it's just brah, lighter shade to darker shade all of a sudden so if you i guess if you are not really looking at it you might not notice it but uh i i saw it so it just kind of sticks up like a saw thumb <laughs> also i think the top knot is supposed to be like straight up but mine is just kind of twisted to the side. Not not a big deal, I think it's actually still okay. For his body, if you were to look at it from the top, you can see the scar and also the muscles are all pretty well sculpted. So that's a job well done on their part. But you can't really see from the front because it is blocked by his arm and you can see on his arm the muscles, the veins that they put on him to show how buff and ripped it is. His fingers similarly for the other arm so i don't think that shading over here is just the natural indentations that are throwing the shadows around all these areas okay uh for his swords the sheath and everything they are all pretty well painted but nothing to write home about i think this is a standard that we expect to see nothing more nothing less he's carrying this satchel so this is the rope that kind of is holding it and over here this is the bag and details wise is, is pretty good looks like a dumpling <laughs> for his white kimono certain areas you can see that they're trying to do a bit of shading especially areas that where they're supposed to be shadows so but the thing is that it's not black or like gray along that the color spectrum is kind of purplish so you can see here and some areas here and even some areas here but very light that's actually pretty good also you can see the color differences between here and here just this this is the example of their shadowing other than that creases wise i would say pretty good you see areas here these are what we expect for them to make the figure more natural so one thing i really want to talk about is the cape that he's wearing on his back it looks absolutely amazing and beautiful. I know that this outfit is the canon outfit, but I believe this gold color um, is something special that they added on. Don't take my word for it, but I, if I recall correctly, the second Master Lies Zoro that is coming out near the end of the year, they didn't choose to go with this gold painted color. It's more like a dark yellow without this glossy paint. And I know which one I prefer, this one obviously. It just makes, the gold just makes this figure look a little bit more classy and stand out in my opinion. And for the printing wise, it's also pretty good. Obviously not 100% as you can see around the edges. But really well done. No shading, of course. Um, and even this part up the sleeve is just kind of blocked off. This is the max I can put my finger in. <laughs> okay. For the bottom of the kimono, you can see they are trying to fade the color nicely from white to this shade of green. So I think it is pretty well done. And one thing I want to say is that when I'm touching this, um, you can feel that it is a pretty good quality PVC. I mean, in certain figures, once you touch it, 
you can tell whether or not the quality is good or bad and some is just bad but over here it is one of the better ones and you can sort of feel that the texture that they're trying to pull off for you to feel here almost a bit leathery which is really neat and for the bottom well <laughs> you can see they this is um, you can't put your finger through it, so this is blocked by this piece of black plastic. So this is kind of interesting, they don't want you to look underneath what he's wearing. And probably the feet is just separate parts, the legs are just separate parts that they kind of inserted in, I suspect. And this is the, these are the sandals, and I think they cut corners on this one because usually you can see the lines uh, that are kind of carved into it, unless this is, I don't know. The natural design of how the sandals are supposed to be. I have taken out the box so once again we can have a look of the prototype image and compare it with the actual product. So one thing I really notice is the orientation of Zoro Juro varies differently between these two. So if you look at a prototype the alignment of the head and the body is kind of both of them facing forward while for the actual product if I were to shift his body towards the front, you can see that his head is actually looking off towards his left. So that's one key difference I would say that they made from prototype to actual product. In terms of the face, it also seems a bit different. This face looks better obviously, but I also I also wouldn't call it uh, call this one an, uh, a, big, a big significant downgrade. My top knot is also shifted towards the side like I say, it should be kind of straight up. And obviously the skin tone for the prototype also looks better. So that's all I can notice. Maybe if you guys notice more, do let me know. Uh, obviously other than the usual quality decrease. The height of Zoro Juro from the bottom to the top of his head. It's around 27 and a half cm. So about 10 and 3 quarter inches. Here are Zoro figures from other series. This is... Zoro POP selling again. This is Grantista Zoro and this is Ichiban Kuji big size Zoro. So you guys can have a comparison between their height and scale. Also if you look at the skin tone across the board, almost all of them look better with their colors than the one on Zoro Juro. I mean it's something that you know if you just look at him on its own it's, it's okay but next to them you can really start to tell which color looks better on him. Here I have Best Edition Zoro, which is also from the Master Life series. So you can see for yourself and compare the differences between the two. This was made by Brampresto and this is made by Bandai Spirits. So obviously the skin tone here is much more natural and better looking on Zoro than this one. And to be honest, this is one of the best figures I've ever seen from the One Piece series in my life. It's at the pinnacle. And you definitely can't deny the fact that Bandai Spirits figures have quite an observable drop in quality in the products that they have come out with. So make of it what you will. Uh, obviously, this Zorro is still pretty good, but not not the not the best we have seen, but pretty awesome still. Alright friends, I think that's all I have to say about this figure. So in conclusion, I think it is pretty awesome, pretty amazing. Main complaint is the skin tone which is the area that they can improve on. So if you are unconvinced about this figure, obviously we know about the other Zoro that is coming out near the end of this year and they look almost the same. It's also Ichiban Koji Master Lies. Key differences are he's not holding his sword and instead he's holding his uh, this bottle in his right hand. Also some significant colour changes to the coat and to the bottom of his kimono. Um, and I would suggest if you're thinking of getting that one instead, just wait to see the actual product. Screw the pre-order unless you're in places where you are re it's really difficult for you to get figures. If not, just screw the pre-order. Wait for the actual product to come out and see the quality because by now I feel that we have been burned enough um, for you know cases where it just looks so different and big decrease in quality between the prototype and the actual figure. So just wait and see and 
I think it's better to pay a few more dollars if it's good than paying a lot more money in your pre-order and feel disappointed. That's just my piece of advice because it's kind of like the norm now we have to expect from Bandai Spirits. Also, if you're thinking why I didn't get the Luffy that comes out with the Zoro is because I'm kind of waiting for the one that is coming out near the end of the year. Hoping that they don't screw up that one because I feel that that Luffy Taro is more dynamic in pose. It looks better with the muscles uh, that is more ripped. Okay, uh, and that's all I have. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Really love to hear your opinions and comments. So thank you guys very much and I will see you soon. Goodbye.